Who doesn't fucking love pies? I do. 150 grams of flour, 75 grams of butter, 75 grams of cheese. This is tasty shredded, or you can use cheddar. In it goes. Tiny bit spoony. <clears throat> this is just a butter blend. You can use real butter. You can use lard. But everyone knows butter is better. Excuse fingers. I did wash my hands. And now we've got to put a little pinch of salt. Work it by your hands. You can use other means, but you don't want to work the gluten and the flour too much, otherwise it becomes stretchy and rubbery. And we don't want that. We want a perfect, crunchy pie crust. Just, just work it through. Work it through. Hope you can see it. But it goes from a nice, bright white into a yellowy, Color. You just keep working it and working it and working it. The cheese will break down, the butter will incorporate the flour, it all go together. You just want to work it through like that. You want this to be nice and crumbly when you eat it. You don't want a hard, chewy, no frills, pie crust. Washing it all together, it starts to come together like this, you see. You don't want to knead it like you would bread, otherwise you'd be overworking it. You just want to get it to come together. I'm just making a small chicken pie. And there you have it. Almost done. Short crust, short crust pastry for a pie. Now Good thing to do with this is just get into a ball, set it to the side. Now you can just roll out what you need if you make a larger batch and then uh, freeze the rest. Roll it out and freeze it. Just want to get all the last bits in there. Waste not, not a lot. And there it is. Best thing to do is set that right, a bit of butter on the hand, and just massage it over the top. And that'll keep it nice and moist while you get your pie filling is done, which is going to be leftover roast chicken. I've got to admit, I almost, almost stuffed it. I was thinking, why is this so crumbly, too crumbly? And I forgot something. You've got to add around about 50 grams of water to this mixture. So now I've got to incorporate all this water into there. And then I was like, what did I do wrong? And it's first time making a video in a long time. So that's much better. So yeah, first time making a video in a while and I kind of just lost my train of thought. So, and I just had to sit back for a second. Like, what, what, am I, what am I doing bloody wrong? You idiot. So this is me, I'm uncut, I'm raw. Um, no editing involved. It's a little, probably just a touch too much water. But yeah, she'll be good. Just work it in. Done. It's a bit too tacky, just add a little bit more flour. Just a touch, just to dry it out. But I'll do that in a second. Time to get on with yeah, the meat. The fucking, uh, filling of the pie. You're gonna want to put a bit of uh, butter in this. So we're gonna make like a like a roux. So it's basically like starting off a bechamel, but we're gonna just get some 
butter in there. Just a good little chunk of butter. And we're going to get that melt. I want it to melt, not burn. So all this is on a low to medium heat. I'm using a gas stove here if you haven't already noticed, but low to medium heat. Oh, one, one. And I'm using the smallest burner I got. And I'm gonna put that on low. Depending on the amount of uh, filling you're making, you could use one to like say a whole chook, right? But I'm gonna use half of one because I'm only making a small batch. There's only the three of us here eating. So half a, like that's a good bit over a tennis ball size onion. So half of that will do. this far corner here. I'm going to be putting in some chicken, store bought chicken stock, or you can make your own homemade chicken stock. I think I've got a recipe there. But you're going to, this is going to, you're going to want about a cup, maybe a cup and a half to two cups, and just let it warm up because you want it to temper before you put it in here so everything doesn't stop cooking. So you just well, roughly two cups there, and then it'll, it'll reduce. And once you've got the flour going with the roux, and uh, it's, it'll turn to a lovely gravy. And then to that, we're also gonna need some salt, pepper, and some thyme or mixed herbs, any kind of uh, herbs you have, just put a little bit in there to season it okay, up. So the butter has almost melted. So we're gonna add the onions in a second. It's pretty much done. I'm just gonna saute these onions. I'm gonna just turn the heat up a little bit to a medium and get these onions going. So the heat's slowly coming up. I'm just gonna add a little bit of garlic powder because, you know, garlic makes everything better. I say that about everything, but it's all true. It's all about making flavor. Layers and layers of flavor. And here you go, so a few dry thyme leaves. You can use fresh. Fresh probably would be better. But, you know, use what you got on hand. Everyone has a dry herb mix somewhere. I, I, I use a lot of Italian herbs. That actually smells really yum. So I'm just gonna get all that, just incorporating with each other. Look at that. Oh yeah. Centralise it on the burner a little bit better. That's it. And cast iron cookware is the gun. It takes a little longer to heat up, but once you've got a nice warmth going through it, it'll maintain it and it's easy to manage. That's starting to warm up nicely. Okay, so they're starting to soften up a bit. Time for some bloody flour. So just gonna put a little sprinkle of flour in to get this roux happening. It's a blonde roux, but we'll turn it into a nice brown gravy. A little bit at a time. Make sure you always get the flavors off the bottom. Any form of caramelization on the bottom is flavor. And it'll burn if you don't bring it up. But when you bring it up, it flavors everything. I'm gonna wipe my chicken in now. Now I chopped this up fine because I was making sangers before. The old rebels, good old rebel, or what do you call them? Jaffa sandwiches or something like that. But yeah, a bit of skin on, not too much. 
Now, if you've made a roast chicken yourself and you've got leftovers, use the juices and the fat from that chicken. Especially your first time making something like this, you you've just got to get a feeling for it. You just you want to you gonna see what I'm talking about in a minute when it starts to come together. It starts to get sticky. If I can get it to zoom in a bit better, you start to get like a it's like glued consistency. You know, when you're a kid trying to make homemade clay glue to stick shit on the wall. Well, I was a bastard of a kid, so I remember. My mum will verify that too. So will my wife. So will anyone that fucking knows me. <laughs> person on Facebook will agree with me. Alright, now we get to we get somewhere. And one of the next flavour layers I'm gonna be doing is using ale. Ale of your choice, but the two I love one would be Wild Jack. And the other one will be Furphy. They both are pale owls or Pacific owls. One's a Pacific, one's a pale, I think. I don't know what I've got in the fridge though. Yeah, I've got a, got a wild yak here. The old wild yak. It's beyond, because my last one, I wanted that one. But pop the old lid off. Okay, guys, I bloody got interrupted by a phone call. I forgot to put on pilot mode. But yeah, it's time for some beer. Oh shit yeah. It's my last one, as I was saying before we got rudely interrupted. I'll have to go to the shop and get some more. Now yeah, we're getting somewhere. Don't leave this unattended. Keep working it. You're going to want to add your stock. I'm going to turn the heat up just a touch. There we go. Now, on my YouTube, you might notice I've got some motorbike videos there, but I haven't been able to get to that over the last few weeks or a month and a half I should say. It's been too cold in the garage and I don't like the cold no more. But yeah, got some heat going in there. But I will be getting back to that throughout spring and summer. And I'm gonna be dividing my channel up. I didn't know you could do it. You can actually have 50 sub channels underneath your one channel on, on YouTube. So I've got to work out how to do it because I'm like totally bloody technology literate. I'm lucky to blow an email, I'll tell you the truth. And to do this. Um, so I'll be getting back to it. So I'm just going to add the stock in bit by bit. And it's going to brown up. I'm going to get some heat into that. I'm going to use the big element now. I don't want to burn out of that pot. Enough, there's enough fluid there to get everything cooking properly. There we go. Fix that up. Zoom it in. Fix it up. 
not all about this bloody fancy cooking stuff, but ah, uh, sorry, fancy video on. I'm just the man on a mission cooking dinner for his daughter. Just gonna let that simmer and break down. Not break down, sorry, thicken up. Back in five to get the pastry ready. I'm gonna get it. I wanna put it as a base. No, I'm not gonna do a base, sorry. I'm just gonna do a crust over the top. So I'm just gonna pinch a bit off. Not quite half, but almost half. I'm gonna roll it out. I'm gonna not use all of this, but. I'm gonna do this, otherwise it's gonna get stuck everywhere. Now you don't want this to be too thick, guys. Because it will puff up. So thin it out a little bit. And that's about it. A little bit, make it a little bit wider. See how it's not springing back, it's not elasticy. Oh, it's hard to get out of bloody zoom. It's not springing back when I when I roll it. It's not elasticy. You do not want it to become elasticy. Because that is when it will become an old rubber boot. Okay. Now just cut it a little bit wider than your dish. So you can, you know, come out about a, not quite a centimetre. Kind of that thickness there will do. That way you can like, you know, loop it over the top. Like something you see out of Snow White. No birds coming here jumping on my bloody pastry. Don't want no bird flu here. We've already got Corona. And with this off cuts, let's put it back to that one. Now remember, you can glad wrap that, get it out, glad wrap it, throw it in the freezer. Use it again next time. It, it'll hold in the freezer. Now there's our pie crust. We'll put our filling in the dish, pie crust over the top, preheat the oven to 170 degrees, or 180 degrees. Nearly got away from me, took the yakking too much. Turn that off. It's thickened up now. Sorry, that's a little bit too done. But it'll come good. A little bit of this magic stuff. up off the bottom because that's all the flavorings in the stock and onions and herbs and butter it's still nice and light brown so it's not burnt but if you leave it there it will burn there's no heat now it's all been turned off now I've just got to check it for seasoning these stocks usually have a fair bit of salt in them so you don't really need to add too much salt a little bit of pepper won't go astray. Salt 
tastes good. It's got a nice sweetness from the onion. Good chicken flavour. The chicken, oh, bloody hell, I've done it again. The chicken is slightly too small for this. You'd, you'd want to break it up to larger size, sizes. But like I said, I was making sandwiches and uh, I thought I'd, I'd turn some into a pie. But that is delicious. Absolutely delicious. You can spice it up with chilli if you want. But I can't. Because it's for my daughter. Now, we're just going to scoop it up into this little ramekin dish. Like so. She's going to flip out about the onions, but, you know, bad luck. And like I said, the oven's on around about 180 degrees, preheated. There's your soup in there. So I have to clean off the side a bit. Oh! There it is. So now we're going to get the pastry. Put it zoom out, touch. Take this pastry out. Straight over. The, I'm going to make it a little bit wider. Straight up over the top, like so. Put the old fork. Oh, probably better actually. Yeah, that's better. The pork makes it look pretty, but I can seal it up as well. That goes back with the other. And just a couple of venting holes. Now this goes into the oven. As stated, and a hundred and that's 180-ish, still warming up. But, whack it in. Right in the guts, shut the oven, and we'll be back in a few minutes. There it is. Whew, it's hot. It's, we've got a good warm day today. It's like the beginning of spring. Yesterday was the first day of spring here in Australia. You didn't already know, but uh, I'm gonna let that cool for about 10 minutes and then I'm gonna have a red hot crack at that. That looks yum. I've already eaten the half, pretty full, but that looks too yummy to not have a crack at. So, see in about 10 minutes. Okay, Catalina. He's going to try my chicken with shortcut with short crust pastry pie. Yeah, you got a knife here. Just cut a little corner off. And get a little bit of a pastry and a little bit of a meat. Make sure you, it's not too hot. It looks yummy. But, oh. <laughs> scoop it up with some meat. Mm. Any good? Mm -hmm. let, me, let me help you scoop it up. <laughs> You've got to keep it like this. A bit of meat and a bit of pastry. Oh, cool. Any good? Now, out of 10, what would you give it? 5 million, 10, 10 million, 5. Plus 5 million, plus 5 million, plus 5 million, plus 5 million. Five trillion. Is that all? Ten trillion, ten trillion, ten million, <laughs> ten trillion out of ten. 
All right, cool. You heard it from the best. <laughs> now let's hear it from the rest. <laughs> Peace out. Bye. Bye. There is. Now have a taste. Huh? Now my mum has a taste. It's going to be burning, Hello. I think. I'm actually the famous person. <laughs> With only 51 followers. <laughs> Oh, 53? Oh, 53 three. Excuse me. I just got 53 today. Which I'm happy. Because I'm getting more followers. Mm. But this time mm. it's an adult following. Good. Really, really nice. No, yeah. Hatsu. Oh, chicken. Mm. <laughs> Try the pastry. Yeah. pastry. Hot. Is it good? The pastry was so light. Like, melting your... That's how it's supposed to be. Melting, yeah. Not wow. for me. Wow. That's oh. because you just chewed it up and swallowed it before it got to melt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's really that kind of melting your mouth. Is it a winner-winner chicken dinner? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really, really nice. I still